Yes, our queen. <laughs> Thank you. I turn it over to Cindy. So I'm going to do what I did last week and kind of stand back here since I'm on a still on a staff. Although that little patch that we put on my neck last week, next day I was walking without without my stick at all. I was like, oh my gosh, it was amazing. <laughs> um, so um, we're going to start with a quiz because I'm a teacher, right? <laughs> so we're going to, it's not a hard quiz. I think you, most of you will have it, but what does a green traffic light mean? Go. Excellent. Excellent. Okay. What does a red traffic light mean? Stop. Now this is the trick question. What does a yellow traffic light mean? See? Yeah. Some of you think it means slow down. Some of you think it means step on it, right? A little bit of confusion over that one. Yes. Yes, yes. Oh, we've got a scholar in the back. He's talking about how... There you go. Where the yellow light is actually just a signal to say, perhaps maybe you need to slow down if you're far back or keep moving because you're too close to slam on your brakes. Yeah, but notice how we had different answers for that one though, okay? So as a teacher, I have to like leave some room there, you know, um, but there are signals all over. We think about like for out in the traffic, but the walking sign versus the stopping and the black flashing numbers to like, you know, hurry it up pick it up. I would say, how many seconds do I have? I can make this. And my partner's like, no, no, you cannot. Oh yeah, I can watch. You don't run. Yeah, but I can make this. Um, you know, railroad crossings are fun. So when I get on my ferry and still come, there's trains that go by all the time. So we have the red lights flashing, the exciting, and you know that you're going to have to sit and wait. So that's exciting signals, right? You know that, yeah, you have to sit and wait. Um, I think of even like the warning flashing yellow lights when you're coming up on a curve or something that's really, sh you know, sharp. So signals are everywhere helping us. And I'm going to go back and touch on just a little bit of some of what I talked last week about emotions, because emotions are exactly that. They're also signals. That's what they are. They're telling us something about ourselves. Um, they're telling us maybe what we don't like, what we do like, what we're that we're afraid of something, what is it about it? But they are simply um, signals. But oh, so powerful they can be, right? Where sometimes they start to run and or actually rule our life. Um, they're mo sometimes they motivate us to withdraw, to lash out or freeze. So they're very connected to our behavior. So we want, I don't want to to slight them or to minimize them because they're not, but I do want to go back and keep saying is they are signals. So we do have power over them or power to do something with them. Now, one way to work through our deep emotions is participating in healthy communities. So that's what I'm talking about today is cultivating emotional resilience through community. Now I have three happy chickens, three happy hens. And um, at one point I was down to one and then she wasn't so happy. She was actually very sad and she started to actually crow almost like a rooster at times. And like she was almost crying because um, we had gotten some dogs had gotten into the pen and it was not pretty. But the very next day I'm like, I'm looking on, on you know line or whatever to find out where i can get some more chickens because it's like i had heard chickens want to be in community so i went out and i got two more chickens and i lived in renton and you you can only have three chickens or whatever but you could have no roosters so i went out and got two more chickens and brought them back um and then within moments she perked up and she was like okay and now it became like who's the pecking order thing took over but still it was like this is fun right so um, yeah, it was such a difference. I thought, oh my gosh. And so I do, I do the same thing. I, I like having three because if one passes away, you still have the two and they become best friends, even if they were the two that didn't like each other. Third one goes, the two of them are like, oh yeah, we're besties. We've been besties forever, right? <laughs> and then if I'm down to one, I'll go get two more chickens and introduce them. So, um, but I, I also think about horses. Horses like to be in community. Think about the wild horses. They're always in huge herds. 
So, and I grew up with horses, but we always had them around other horses. And sometimes I drive by where there's one horse and I'm like, that horse is lonely. <laughs> I mean, I know it's pr more practical and stuff like that, but I just know they like to be in community. Dolphins too. You know, there's a lot of animals that prefer to be in community. Well, let me tell you, human beings as a species need to be in community. Now, there are some people that probably don't fit that. We have hermits and stuff that do maybe better than that. But whether you're an introvert or an extrovert, you still need some kind of community to be that your healthiest self. And um, I just, I want to, you know, just put that out there because um, that's what's so beautiful about things like the unity churches, because it gives you a place to have a bigger community than just your family. And we may have work and stuff, but sometimes what happens in a church um, is not something that can happen at work, you know, because you're not, you get to be yourself, right? So, um, you know, as we witnessed during the coronavirus, there are quite a few people that really suffered during that, that were isolated. And um, we, we've had, even in the schools, we talk a lot about mental health as we come back to the classrooms, that there's a lot more stuff going around social, emotional learning and mental health and, pre, you know, having um, professionals on campus that can help with that. Um, so I, I want to do this song um, called Faithfully, and then it just, it ref the song reflects a little bit on how others, we, we are God's hands and we are God's feet. And so we can sit there and we can, we can pray, you know, like, okay, I need this. But, you know, what can you do to help others? And so this song is called Faithfully and how um, really helping, we can help others um, through hard stuff makes a big, big difference. Change screens. Changing screens means I have to remember, you know, where something is. <laughs> So as I said last week, sometimes my songs start out kind of sad, but there's always a turning point to it. So this is supposed to start out sad. Wrapped around her pillow, tears in her hand. A single mom with a dead-end job was never in her plans. And though the sun is shining through the window pane, a bitter dark from her tired heart is trying to block the rays. And she wonders how she'll make it Raising three kids alone Feeling terrified She sends out this prayer for hope Faithfully please stay with me And graciously give to me Courage and strength to see this through wait on you and change my doubt to gratitude and one day I'll look back and see clearly how you stood by me faithfully walking home from high school Thoughts filled his head. What had he done as the oldest son to frighten off his dad? And when his mom keeps crying night after night, he wants to say it'll end someday. I'm working to make it right. And he wonders how he'll make it Raising two kids and his mom Feeling terrified He sends out this prayer to God Faithfully, please 
stay with me and graciously give to me courage and strength to see this through. Faithfully, I'll wait on you and change my doubt to gratitude. And one day I'll look back and see clearly how you stood by me. stunned by the part they have to play to make it through each day burdens so huge but i have faced them too so i fully understand when we help out where we can one day they will say stayed with me and graciously given me the courage and strength to see this through and faithfully you walked with me you gave me hope and dignity and now i can look back and see clearly how you stood by me Thank you. So we can make a difference in people's lives, right? And the, you think about communities, they're not all healthy communities. And so I want to look at two, um, what I would call collaborative community building actions that communities can take on. And I'm pulling this again, some of this inspiration is coming from Elena Aguilar's book, um, Onward, that I used last week. Um, so I'm going to talk about communication, and then I'm going to briefly touch on conflict. Yeah, don't get into the conflict too much, you know what I'm saying? But So communication, and the communication I'm talking about is really the idea, again, of honest sharing and honest listening. And last week I talked about um, cultivating emotional resilience through storytelling, which is a sharing of our stories to others. So that was last week, but now I want to talk a little bit about sharing of just your emotions. So I'm going to put sharing first and then listening. Sharing your emotions with others actually is a very important um, ac action to take. To say, I'm feeling sad, I feel depressed, I feel left out, I feel excited, you know, I feel um, worthless, I feel, I'm, I'm kind of focused on some of the negative things, because those are the things that get us down. So how do we move from I'm feeling worthless to I feel empowered, I feel worthy, I feel, you know, like I'm thriving, you know, that kind of thing. So, but I think, you know, you, you can read all sorts of books, but I was thinking about this and I came up with this, much. it was, maybe it's not a fresh idea, but it's a fresh idea in my mind that sometimes I think it works when you say, I'm feeling sad, that that works because when you name something, you are taking control of it. You're naming it. You go back even to when Adam and Eve, they named the animals or something like that. But the naming, it shows a little bit of some kind of, you have control of some sort over it. So I named my emotion. It's not naming me, I'm naming it. So it gives me some power or empowerment. I don't like to think idea of, of power over something, but I think empowerment would be more of what I'm thinking about. Um, and I think the other part of that is sharing emotions and is then let other people, allow other people to hold your emotions for you. So when you share it with somebody, and I was thinking about a therapist that I had when I was, this is after my divorce, and I was going through some really emotional stuff. I absolutely loved my husband. Um, best friend, he came out of the closet and then um, we, we waited some months and talked and did this and then decided to go ahead and get divorced. And so it was all amicable. I remember us sitting on the ground going, okay, which I want these two Christmas ornaments. Okay, I'll have these two. I mean, it was just funny. I, was, I remember us separating our Christmas ornaments. So, but oh my gosh, the loss, 
the loss of my best friend and um yeah, so I was in therapy for a few years. It was really, really difficult. But I remember my one therapist, as I was talking, she just sat there like this. Well, she was sitting, so it didn't look so stupid. But I'm, you know, um, but she just had her hands, I think, in her lap. And I knew what she was doing was she was holding my truth or my experience. That was my truth at the time, whatever I was sharing. is like she's sharing the burden with me. So I loved it. It was a powerful image, and I knew what it stood for. And so I appreciated it very, very much. Um, that's I just that's the only part I want to touch on because I talked about storytelling last week. Um, so if you want to catch up on that, I think it's on Zoom, um, YouTube. Yeah. So, um, but I want to focus probably a little bit more of my time on the listening part. What? What'd you say? What'd you say? Right? <laughs> um, and uh, Elena Aguilar uses the uh, expression or the term expansive listening in her book instead of restrictive or whatever, it's this expansive listening. And I love that idea of expansive, something that makes it the world bigger or brighter or more open, right? Um, and the biggest thing, and it's not difficult, is, is the idea that instead you're listening, you start to listen and ask questions. It's really the focus on asking questions. And it's not, well, I don't want to say it's not, I'm gonna get to that in a minute, but it's asking questions to further understand. And sometimes by asking clarifying questions or asking questions to further understand, you're actually helping them dig deeper that they might that they might not have, have, have done yet, right? So you're saying, well, tell me more. That's one of the best phrases, just tell me more. So, you know, why is, oh, you know, and identifying, oh, it sounds like you're just having a, you're having a hard day or this is a hard thing. And so you are affirming their experience and you are asking them to tell you more. And so you are connecting with that person and it's super powerful. And they begin to share because they they realize they're in a safe place. Now, you fixers out there, this is the hard one because you wanna fix it. You don't get to fix it. It's their experience, but you can come alongside them. And you actually are thinking, change your thinking. It's like you are actually helping fix it by listening by engaging them in conversations where they get to go deeper and they get to figure out what they want to do with their situation and how they want to overcome something or work their way through something. So you are actually part of the fixing, but it's not an active like, oh, let me, well, look, I got enough information and then I'm going to start telling you what to do. And most of the times we don't really have enough information. And then, you know, and then they'll, they'll say like, but, but when this, people start doing but, buts, the double butts, <laughs> you know that you actually, you're, you're not, you don't have enough information. And so ask some more questions and then realize, no, just let it go, let it go, let it go. Um, I love the idea of just releasing that you let go. You doesn't, you don't have to control the outcome. What you want for that person, you may not get. So let that go. What you really should want for that person, I don't want the word should, but one of the things you can want for that person is for them to find their way. And so again, by doing, coming off as a place of, I'm here to help you find your way to, or to encourage you to find your way, that you are again creating a safe place for them to continue to share. And they'll, the stories, the stories might come easier, right? Um, and so that is a beautiful thing, but just releasing the wanting to, I got to fix this, or I got to, I got to, I want them to leave here feeling better. If you want that, listen, ask questions. They will start to feel better. Um, I think the other one is, there is one time when I would say I step in, it's, it's when people have the my fault thinking going on. So when you talk about um, people who are uh, victims of domestic violence, of sexual assault, um, even children who are going through a divorce, like in my song, right, where a child feels like, oh, this is my fault, or I did, I did something to deserve sexual assault or be the domestic violence. And, and that is when I think you totally can step in and say, this is not your fault, you know? And so you can affirm that that is not something you can change. Cause if they're even, and even if they say, I feel like it's my fault. You could ask them, do you feel like it's your fault? Yes. Well, it's not, I'm telling you right here and right now, it is not your fault. You did not cause this. And so I think that is one time I definitely, you can step in and I'm, I think it's important to step in because that helps with the healing in terms of being able to um, know that it's not their fault. And so if you have to say it more than once, it's okay. Just a sec, there's my, I brought my friend Alfredo and he is over here and I keep hearing him and I think he has something to say. 
So I'm bringing him out. Yep, yep, yep. Alfredo, what's going on? Oh, I'm so sad. Oh, I hate it when you're sad. I know, I know, it's so, so bad when I'm sad. Well, can you tell me about it? Yeah, I tried out for one of those um, TV pump cooking competitions. And I didn't make it. <laughs> oh, Alfredo, that is so sad. I'm feeling you, man. I know, I know. Well, tell me more about this. Well, I always wanted to be uh, on a competition, and I always ultimately wanted to have my own cooking show, you know, like the Swedish chef in uh, Sesame Street. Well, that, that's a great dream. Yes, I know it's a great dream. I'm not going to make it. <laughs> well, Alfredo, is this the only chance that you get to do this? Uh, well, no, but it's still so sad. I wanted to be on Top Chef, you know? You're whipping out shrimp things in the Italian style. Yeah, okay. Can you move? I'm going to move this up a little bit just because I want to make sure, you know, you don't start talking too much. Oh, yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> well, what do you think? Well, I do think that maybe your idea is right. I could. There are other opportunities. I could try again next year, work, work on my recipes and try again next year. But maybe oh, I have an idea. Ho oh, ho! I could start a blog on fancy snacks snacks you can make in minutes that are delicious like dried shrimp on tasty savory cheesy cracker things with pepper on top i need to work on it a little bit but i think i can come up with something wow alfredo that sounds like fun i could even do TikTok, and i could maybe dance while i'm teaching well you see you have other ideas yeah i do i have other ideas well, how are you feeling now? Oh, much better. Thank you for listening to me. All of you, thank you for listening to me. I'm feeling so much better. <laughs> yeah, Alfredo, that's fantastic. Yeah, hey, hey are, um, can you come over for dinner tonight? I'm making that pumpkin lasagna you love. Oh, I could do that. Um... I don't know. Do you think that you all want to come over for dinner tonight? <laughs> um, that Alfredo, your place isn't very big. I mean, it's big to you, but you're not that big. Oh, yeah. I barely can fit you in. Hmm. <laughs> well, maybe another time you all can come over. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. I'm feeling better. I'm Alfredo, like the sauce. <laughs> Bye-bye. You know, Alfredo is such a goofball. I just really like him. And that was so perfect. He came right in at the time to help me show you how to do active listening, to do, you know, I use the words, tell me more. And do you see how he worked out his own stuff? You know, I didn't even have to, I didn't have to tell him and say, oh, you know, fuck it up. There's more opportunities. He'd still be, you know, crying and stuff like that. So I love that. Um, so when you think of communication, it's a mutual sharing and listening that go together, okay? Um, and by doing that open and active, expansive listening, you know, you help people, you help them with emotional resilience. It's, it's, it's not that, I mean, you realize it's not rocket science, right? Now I'm not gonna say it's not hard because for some of it's very hard, but we can start practicing just using that phrase, tell me more. If you can't think of any questions, just go, Tell me more, you know? I want to um, then, like I said, the second thing, communication was one, the sharing and listening. Second thing is conflict. And I said, I'm gonna do this briefly because it's conflict. Well, that's not why I'll tell you know in a minute, but why are we so afraid of conflict? Oh yeah, because emotions. There's a connection here. Conflict. Emotions. If we didn't have emotions, we'd be like, oh, we just bust into conflict like, you know, we're just busting through a yellow light. Fast, right through there, right? So we, it usually stirs up 
cruddy emotions, fear or anxiety. Um, you know, when, and then the principal says, Cindy, come into my office. My first thought is, oh gosh, what did I do wrong? And this is, uh, and it's funny that I have that. I, I go, why are, you, why are you doing that? You're like an adult. You teach very well. The principal wants to see you. And your first thought is, what did I do wrong? You know? <laughs> Let me just address this conflict in saying that. Conflict as around emotions. We can apply the expansive listening. We can go right back to communication of sharing and listening to deal with conflict. So I'm not giving you a new set of tools. I'm saying, let's go back and visit the same ones when you can sit down and you can say, hey, share. What's your experience? I'm listening to understand you. Tell me more. And then have that person do that with you and you tell them and you share, share. And all of a sudden, when you find that you're just sharing, a lot of times the stuff just dissipates. Now I have, um, for some reason, this has gotten easier for me. Um, and a part of it's that the, the, the trick of not having to control a situation and releasing again, the outcome, right? I'm not set on any particular outcome. So I remember a few years back, when I started working at this school, I had done something and I knew I really had irritated um, a staff member. She was like the Dean of Students. And she's like, can we talk? And I'm like, sure. So she comes down to the room and she opens up the door and she comes in and she's like, uh, 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 uh. and she says her piece. And then I go, okay, what would you like me to do differently? What happened to her? She went like this, what? She did not expect that because it's like, I didn't, she was telling me her experience and I just said, okay, yeah, I totally get that. What would you like me to do differently? And th that conversation was just about, she said, and you know, we moved on to something else. And I thought it was so because I could have like been defensive and showed her that I didn't mean to what my intention was. And I, I didn't have to do any of that. I just, yeah, I get that. What would you like me to do differently? Right? Because I can do that. She wants something different in the situation. But I need to know what it is, right? Because I might do the same dumb thing again. But if I know what to do differently, then I can do it. So I'm going to close with the song called Start Something New. And it's just a reminder that love fits more as it's an action more than it is an emotion. So we talk about emotions, right? And trying to overcome them. But love is actually an action word. It's what we do. When we say, I love somebody, or you commit to a relationship, you're committing to loving them, you're, you're committing to the action of loving them. Even on days you don't, maybe don't feel real fuzzy about them, right? This is called Start Something New. And I'm going to close with this song. And Alfredo, if you need to sing along, you go ahead. No way. Okay, thanks. If I had two iPads, then I could just, you know, Why is it hard to forgive people we rub elbows with? Why do we keep treading on the ones we love? Why is it tough to understand? Someone else so different. Why do we shake our heads at what's been said? Mm -hmm. Well, who would think we believe in love after what we say and what we do? The power of love shines out for all to use. Start something new. Mm -hmm. Why?
Boy, is it tough to give up attempts to win each argument. Why can't we just let go, give up control? Because who would think we believe in love after what we say? we do I am grateful the power of love shines out for all to use start something new start something new Give up the winning and embrace the ones we promise to love. Help out your neighbors, shower them with favors that you wish they would do for you. Start something new so they will know we believe in love. what we do. Yes, I am grateful. The power of love shines out for all to use. Start something new. Start something new. Start something new. Thank you very much.